When you get into woodworking, you might be a little bit confused by the wide variety of types and styles of hand saws that you see out there in the marketplace. While I intend to help you today with clearing up some of that confusion and kind of focusing on the kinds of saws that you might need for fine woodworking. Now, the first type of saw that I ran across as a young boy was a typical construction style hand saw. And these are great, except that they're designed for rough carpentry, uh, for cutting two by fours and framing lumber and, and those sorts of tasks. If we look at this one in the front, it's an old rip style saw. Rip meaning that it's designed to cut with the grain of the wood. So the tooth configuration is more, more like a chisel that kind of plows through the wood. This particular saw is a cross-cut saw and the teeth are much finer, smaller, and they're sharpened in a way that they do a better job of actually slicing through the wood fibers that you would see in a crosscut. Now, you go to the hardware store or home center, you may run across what I call a toolbox style saw, and these come in a variety of configurations as well. I've got one here, you can see it's got very large teeth and it's got very large gullets that help remove the wood chips as you saw. Now this particular style of saw is great for rough cuts. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've used this type of saw when uh, trimming branches off of a tree. It's great for that. But for fine carpentry or fine woodworking, it's not really uh, suitable for that. Now this saw is a similar style, uh, so th those kinds of saws come in handy, but again, they're primarily designed for rough carpentry work and not real suitable for fine woodworking and craftsmanship. Now when we're talking about traditional style saws, we're really talking about a western style hand saw. And what I mean by that is a western style hand saw is designed to be used on the push stroke. In other words, the teeth are sharpened in such a way that they do a more efficient job when you're pushing the saw through the wood. A side uh, consequence of that is that the steel used for a Western style saw is typically pretty thick. And the reason is you're forcing that saw through the wood and we need to maintain some stiffness in that blade to make a straight cut. Now, as we go into finer joinery saws for fine woodworking, you'll find western style saws there as well. But most of them designed for joinery include a back of some sort. This is a modern style back saw and its purpose is to keep that blade nice and stiff as you make the cut using a pushing motion. This particular saw is one I found in a hardware store um, I'm not even sure it's available anymore, but it's also called a back saw because it's got a steel reinforcing spine on it. And its job again is to keep that blade nice and straight and stiff as you push it through the cut. So for joinery saws, you also have rip style saws and cross cut style saws. And again, the difference is in the way the teeth are configured and sharpened. As you get into fine woodworking and fine joinery, you want to start looking for saws that have more teeth per inch, which means that the teeth are going to be smaller, which means they remove less material. However, it yields a very smooth cut, which is what you want in a, in a, a tight joint. This particular saw is called a gents saw. And again, it's kind of like a back saw. It has a brass uh, back on it to help keep that blade nice and stiff and straight as we make a cut. But we can tell from this that the teeth are much smaller than you would find on a larger saw perhaps, so that I can make very intricate cuts and leave a smooth cut line when I'm done. Getting away from Western style saws, now we can talk about Japanese style saws. These are totally different. And what I mean by that is that the blade on a Japanese style saw is typically much thinner than you would find on a Western style saw. You do have saws that have really, really thin blades, 
and some also have a steel back on them to reinforce them and to keep that blade nice and straight. Now the difference with Japanese style saws is they're designed to be used on the pole stroke. And the advantage of that is that the blade is under constant tension and it helps keep that blade nice and straight throughout the cut. The addition of a back on this style of saw just helps reinforce that blade and keep it from flexing in any way. For fine woodworking, there are two general types of Japanese style saws that you'll want to look at. The first one is called a dozuki, and it's this style right here. They're available in a variety of sizes. It has a steel back and a very thin blade. And again, you want to look for uh, a lot of teeth per inch for fine joinery. Japanese style saws typically have a long handle because they're designed to be used with two hands. If you look at a traditional Japanese craftsman, they're actually sitting on the floor on, at a short workbench and they've got the saw in front of them and they're using the pull motion to make the cut. That's a lot different than you know, a Western style saw that you might be used to that's used with one hand. So a Japanese style saw takes a little bit of practice, but once you get used to it, uh, you'll appreciate how well they work. Another style of Japanese saw is called a Ryoba, and it's interesting in that it has cross-cut teeth on one side and ripped teeth on the other side. So it's kind of like a multi-purpose saw. So if you have to rip a board to width, you would use the rip side of the Ryoba there's no back to get in the way, so you can cut the whole length of the board and not have to worry about any interference from, from the back. And then you could just flip it over to make finer cross cuts with it. So this is a general, general purpose saw that's pretty handy to have in the shop. As you gain experience with a Japanese style saw, you may be tempted to use one hand, and a lot of people do once they gain some familiarity with how to use the saw. But the problem is, especially if you're new to Japanese saws, as you use one hand, the body has a tendency to pull in the elbow and your cut now is angled instead of straight. So I always recommend new users of Japanese saws to always get behind their work, sight the work, and you can actually see on both sides of the blade as you cut and use both hands and, and, and extend your index fingers to help guide the saw straight back towards you to make a nice cut. So whatever style of saw you use, the key is to be familiar with it, know its potential, know what it can do and what it can't do, and the biggest key is to practice, practice, practice.